Hey folks, Rob with two guys that are ride. Today we're back in uh, Idle Ridge, uh, visiting with Jim and Brenda, and Jim has brought over one of their friends, Mike. And Mike, you have a fantastic car here today, and I'm gonna let him introduce himself and tell you about this beautiful behemoth behind us. Take it away, Mike. Hi everybody. Uh, this is a 36 Packard 1407. 12 cylinder. I always wanted a 12 cylinder something or another. Now I own three. <laughs> um, I just I love the 36 package primarily, just the the grill and the, the body shape and stuff. I have another uh, 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 a 36, just a regular coupe convertible with the straight eight and. Um, I always wanted something with a 12 in it, and this became available. It was a local car in, here in St. Cloud. It originally was bought new in St. Paul. A doctor owned it, and then it was uh, in a St. Cloud collection here for quite a while, and about uh, a year ago or so, I got it. So, um, well, well, now tell us the story of how you got it when you thought you almost had it prior to that. Well, my so-called friend who lives here, <laughs> Um, and I make an annual visit to uh, a, a guy here in St. Cloud who has a sizable car collection. Uh, his name is Roy Bernick, uh, well known to lots of car people. And uh, we were over there on our annual visit to see what was new over there and this and that. It was in the winter time, you know, you get bored so you go see other people's places and stuff. And all of a sudden we were over there and Roy announces that he's going to sell a car, one of his cars. Unheard of. He's got too many cars, he's got a new favorite coming in and he was going to make room in his garage for one more car. And we said, well, which one is it? And he said, the Packard 12. And my eyes lit up, Jim's eyes lit up, our brain, our wheels started turning, you know, and there was another guy there talking to, to me and I got distracted talking to that other guy and before I know it out of the corner of my eye, Roy and my friend Jim goes over into the other part of the warehouse and there I could see him through the window and I, they were looking at that car and stuff and I, I had no idea what was going on and all of a sudden it dawned on me, I said, I, I think I better get in there and see what's going on. And I got about four feet away from him and they were shaking hands. Here it turns out he had, he had made the deal. And I go, hey, wait a minute. So, so you had seen this car many times before and oh, spied yeah. this and fell in love with this car. Oh, and, yeah. and the owner announced it was for sale and Jim bought it out from under you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Your friend Jim had bought it out from you. <laughs> yeah. Strain the relationship. <laughs> But now I understand though, uh, Jim brought it back to Idle Ridge here and it stayed for a couple years and then uh, what I, happened? Well, I was pouting. <laughs> I was pouting for two and a half years. <laughs> and he knew it. And uh, one day I was, I went downstairs and was looking at it again and this and that. And all of a sudden he said, you know, I got a lot of stuff going on right now. His health wasn't too good at the time okay. and that. He said, uh, I might consider selling you that car. And I stuck my hand out and I said, okay. <laughs> you didn't even let him finish the sentence before you And <laughs> he looked up at me and shocked, a little bit shocked. And uh, before I knew it, he couldn't go back. And so now it's, now I got it. But Jim so, likes to say though, you bought it but forgot to take it home. I don't have room. <laughs> it's you all may have to, have to build on another wing to house something this no, huge. I, I don't have room. <laughs> Well now tell me, one of the cool things is uh, the, this grill is a distinctive grill of Packers and it's affectionately known as the coffin, coffin nose design. Coffin nose design, that's just beautiful, it's just Art Deco. But you know, I hear now uh, cars, we're talking about with aerodynamics and everything, they have uh, grill shutters that open and close depending on to help the aerodynamics and the flow through of the air. This is 1936. And this has thermostatically controlled louvers in the grill. Yes. 
So what we hear about these new cars coming out today that are uh, talking about for aerodynamics and cooling and heating, uh, it was done in 1936, folks. Okay, 80 years ago, 83 years, years my math is failing me right now, but a long, long time ago. Uh, but it was because it was Packard. Packard was well ahead of its time. And this was not a common everyday car back in 1936. By no means. Um, they just, you know, it was five times what a common house would cost. Uh, wow. People just didn't, they didn't have cars like this, you know. And especially, you know, Minnesota isn't known for its well-to-do. I mean, you know, sure. California, New York, right. Chicago. Right. Or even those who did have money, typical Minnesotans wouldn't fall no. that kind of money. So no. for this to be delivered in Minnesota yep. and owned and kept, and it's still, uh, you know, original. Got a Minnesota tag on the firewall, was delivered in Minneapolis in 1936. Um, for it to, to have survived in this environment, it, to me, is pretty remarkable. Right. It's a pretty original car. It had been painted once a long time ago. Uh, major parts of the interior are still original, but you know, seat coverings have been fixed or replaced here and there. And all the wood is that original? All the wood's it's, original. Wow. I mean, it's a it's a pretty good representation of what the car was when it was delivered wow. new. And so that's we, the way I like it. I don't, oh, they sure. don't have to be perfect because I'm going to drive the, the darn thing. And right. I'm not that even much on polishing. Okay, okay. <laughs> but you do, I mean, it, 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 but you drive it as it would have looked on the roads yes. when new. Yes. And yes. Uh, to arrive in this vehicle is quite the statement. It was certainly a huge statement back then because this car could have been upwards of 10 times what a basic Ford whatever coupe would have been at that time. Yep. So this was quite the ordeal driving down the, the road, the, the, the community street, you name it. Uh, you're in this, you have arrived. Uh, so this is a 12 cylinder. Mm -hmm. And uh, any idea on the horsepower? 160 or so. Okay, a lot of information. It's around 6,000 pounds. Wow. Uh, it's like 5,800 pounds. I, I had the waist slip in the but I can't seem to find it right now. Well, the, one of the cool things is because this is this steel, and it's thick steel, and the frame and the engines, exactly, frame and the engines on these things were so stout that they used to build them. It was a super luxurious car, but they also used them as, used them as trucks and uh, tow trucks. Tow trucks, they were converted into tow trucks. Because they were so darn stoutly built and so dependable with that big V12, uh, with all that torque that they could, they could move a house. I mean, there wasn't much else mechanically out there other than maybe tractors or maybe some military equipment. Okay, okay. That would be of equal <laughs> work capacity. Right, right. Ability. Like this was. Right. So sometimes they'd take them into the shop and cut the back half of the car off and put a tow boom on them. Yep. And uh, they lived their lives in the 50s. Yep, yep. But they were. Tow exactly. So uh, they're 20 some years old and they're still doing double duty, doing heavy duty as tow vehicles because they were so well engineered and so heavily built back in the 30s that yeah. they could just, they lasted, lasted forever. Yeah. I mean, the chrome work, the details, the art deco, the beautiful emblem down below, Packard 12, it just tells the story of this vehicle so much that just the beautiful lines, the creases and the fenders, uh, the absolutely gorgeous in, in, uh, interior, the, the hood ornament, uh, you name it, it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, what is your favorite thing about this car? The power plant and the grill and the side profile. Yeah. It is such a stately vehicle. We got some pictures of that we'll lay into the video, but it is, and I, I just, I love the grill. The coffin top grill is just canted back just enough to give you that that motion yeah like it's just plowing through the wind and it's going to take charge and it's going to take over they did that just right it is it's just absolutely to perfect. me yeah no no i agree i i told you earlier i've always had a soft spot for packers so 30 in the 28 
29s, you know, they're more stood up. Okay. Uh, early 30s, they started to lay back a little more. 33, 34, pretty cool. Yeah. 35, cool. Six, really cool. <laughs> uh, seven, cool. Eight, mm, nine. Yeah, that, they kind of know, they kind of ventured because they went along with it. They were no longer the styling of them. They were starting to follow the trend of other styles. No disrespect to people that up those kind of cars. They're lovely cars, but to me, this was it. Yeah. And then you know, then they started uh, to modern day. We think of a modern day car, the hood and the fenders. Right. Right. On one level plane. Right. This is far from that, and the yeah. headlights are mounted here. Well, you've got the spare tires on the running boards. It's just so classic. But the evolution then in, you know, 38, 39, okay. the fenders started getting higher. Uh, and then 40 or 41, the headlights went from here to here. Uh, into the, integrated into the fender? That's right. Yeah. And then the fenders kept getting higher and higher with the headlights here until yep. the evolution came to where it is today. Yep, yep, it's all hood, fender, everything, and then it just drops yep. off on the slab sides. Yep. You didn't have all this beautiful, just just the chrome strip, the, Arco, the Art Deco chrome strip on top of that huge headlight housing. And then again, repeated here with the... Uh, I, I like the, the wire wheels are just wonderful with the, with the trim rings. I'm sure the hubcaps have been redone. The emblems have been redone, but I mean, it's a... It's, it's original type stuff. Well, and the line here, the line on this fender and the way it's cut and the way the um, the spare tires sit into that fender, it's just a sexy line. Yeah. It's just, again, it evokes motion. And they don't leave the tires hang out. They put this nice streamlined right. cup, cover right. on Look it. Look at that. And then the louvers on the... You know, they don't just have an opening. They have these beautiful flowing louvers that right. you can close. Wow. You keep them closed if you want or there you go. I just I just think it looks so much better. I keep them open. I like them open. It winter. looks good. <laughs> oh sure, sure. Wow. But it's uh, just beautiful. Well suicide. show us the doors. I love the doors. Here we go. Suicide. Gotta be suicide. Love the suicide doors. But front, you know front and rear. It really made it so much easier for uh, egress and uh, you know, in and out of the vehicle there so and you kind of think too um, we're wearing jeans and shirts and shorts right now you rode in this car you were in proper attire you were dressed yeah. ladies in their dresses and corsets in the back the men in their tuxes and, and t tails and top hats in the front so it made it extremely easy to stand up on this nice running board and then just easily get inside yeah. and we'll show you a shot of inside Look at that beautiful, beautiful wood in there. It's not a perfect car, but like I said, it's a good representation of a car back in the day, how it would have been kept nicer by a doctor. <laughs> oh, sure. Or a Wall Street financier or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Because again, folks, you would have had to have had quite a big dollar or a big check account, checking account to own something like this Some at the time. Some of these cars had a driver. Oh and sure. They had a guy that took care of the car, and when the car was needed, you know, you rang the bell, and he came out of his quarters, and he went down and got the car, <laughs> and brought it around front for you. It was warm, and then you got in, and he took you to wherever you were going. Right. Well, now show us that uh, huge rear compartment, folks. Talk about uh, recliner. Now, one thing I did notice earlier that I want to show you, uh, Chrysler came out with this stow-and-go seating a few, oh, 10, 12 years ago. But I got to show you again, this is where Packard was ahead of the game. They had stow-and-go seating way, <laughs> way back there uh, in 36, or probably even before then. And then you can see on the bottom there, uh, that's an auxiliary heater. Uh, because again, you know, it was a closed vehicle, but you, you did need a little extra heat. And then you can see it's quite a bit of footwell space. And Mike will fold that up and show you how that works. That's just beautiful. Oh, my goodness gracious. How beautiful of a car is this? And just, again, I'm going to try to get an, uh, a shot. We've got some pictures from outside. But 
just its overall mass. And I just want to show you the overall length of this car. We'll put down all the specs of the vehicle, the wheelbase, the overall length, the horsepower, the displacement, all of that in the description below. But I want to give you an idea of how massive this Packard is. Okay, we'll take a few steps and walk toward the back. Now I'm walking at a leisurely pace, but it's taking me quite a bit of time still to get back here. But it's a good way of demonstrating the overall mass and size of this vehicle. And I see what you're saying. It's just its formal, upright self that is so 30s. It's so classic. Yet, you know, Mike, I'm, I'm going to go to say it's, it's actually understated too, though. I think it's a little understated. Well, they didn't. The color speaks to that. It's not red. It's not bright blue. It's really, really, really dark blue. Right. I love the the uh, trunk rack on the back. When it's folded up, you see the nice Packer 12 emblem. And then, uh, of course, you know, if you've got your luggage, you've got your trunk, you're going to fold it down and set the trunk right on it. How much uh, room do you have in the actual uh, inside storage? Zero. Zero. Okay, so was that, <laughs> what was that basically for then? Well, I, you know, I think it was like just to have a spot for something, anything. Okay. If you wanted, if you just absolutely had to have something concealed, yeah. then you, you would no, have that. You pretty much had to buy this. To yeah, have this you had to have that as, trunk rack. as an option because there wasn't there isn't much. Oh, you're right. Oh my goodness. So it's kind of like there's like, room for another tire. Right. So imagine if you're doing a road trip, you you may want to put a yet a third tire back there. This is probably the same mold, underfloor mold that they use for a lot of models. This one has a side mount. Sure. Some of them have side mounts. This is where the tire. Mount. Okay, I got you. But yeah, so that's what it was. It was not a storage truck. It was probably the spare tire truck right. uh, or, or area. And then this is where we as Americans get that back storage as being called a trunk. trunk. Because on this is where you would put a your trunk. steamer trunk. There is a radio in this car. But there is, there, is, that a, is that an original radio in this car? I believe so. Oh my goodness. I'm not an expert on this kind of stuff. Okay. And uh, I haven't messed with it much. Neither Jim nor I have messed with it much. Oh, I see that As now. to whether it works or not. Right. That, that is the radio. It, that's the head of the controller. The oh. radio itself is a big cumbersome Oh More sure. Cumbersome thing underneath there. So, any anything else that you want to tell us? What that your absolutely love affair? I mean, you said you love thirties. You always wanted the V twelve. So, what? But was it the Packard, or could it just been any other car? No. Here's what happened. All right. Uh, my I grew up in a racing family. My father oh. and my uncle. Okay. Spent weekends, you know, three nights a week, uh, racing dirt track. 34 Fords, oh, okay. 40 Fords, whatever. Okay. And naturally, I'm tagging along as a kid, so I got that gene. Yep. And up until uh, 2005 was the last time I raced. I raced for like 30 years. Wow. Okay. I was the first guy in Central Minnesota to make a million dollars racing. Wow. The wow. Problem was, I started with two million. <laughs> okay. So after uh, it only took me 30 years to figure that. <laughs> where I was going with that <laughs> and so now I got to replace that addiction with another addiction okay. and I'm thinking well you know what those little cars look like kind of fun so I bought a 60 T-Bird because dad had a 60 T-Bird back okay. in the day right and then you know uh, I saw there was a local guy here riding around in his 38 Ford Cabriolet and I just thought God, man, that is the coolest car so then I started looking at stuff and well, that 36 Ford is really cool too. That's almost cooler yet. Okay. So I'm on eBay, figuring this is back in 2007 or so. Uh, every day I'm looking on eBay. I got 36 Ford, 36 this saved in my favorites, and I'm Googling and all that stuff. All of a sudden, one day, boom! What the heck is that? It's a 36 Packard 120B convertible, Ooh. and it was red, and it was down in Dallas. You know, and it was just about affordable, you know, so I'm bidding on the darn thing and all of a sudden at the last minute I got it. And I really? Oh, well, now what am I going to do? <laughs> I got to go and tell my wife what just happened. 
So we went down and got that 36 Packard, and I had never been around a Packard. Okay. Where I grew up in, in central Minnesota, you might have seen a, one of those 48, 49, 50 bathtub Packards. Sure, right. Go bouncing by once in a while, you know, but yep. they were grandma and grandpa's cars, and they weren't right. cool. Right. I, I didn't know what a Packard was, and uh, I just became totally immersed in especially that 36 era, around that era, those Packards. Right. So we have that Packard and we're bouncing around central Minnesota with it. And I went to back to the 50s one time and there's a guy down uh, by Buffalo, his name is Joel, and he has a 29 Murphy J Doozy. Ooh. And I come around the corner at back to the 50s and he had it at back to the 50s. And I saw that car and my life was over. My life was literally over. I have 500 pictures of that car. I follow oh. that car around to different shows and just take pictures of it all day. Oh long. boy. And I could not figure out how I was ever going to be able to afford a car like that. Right. So ever since then, I've been working towards sure. bettering in, in, in that era of cars. Well, Mike, thank you so much for sharing your absolutely beautiful Packard with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you so, so very much.